Amen. Good to be in the Lord's house this evening. Take your hymnals. We'll turn to number 303 to get started. 303, stand with me if you're able. My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary. 303. My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray, take all my guilt away. Oh, let me from this day be holy thine. May thy rich grace impart strength to my fainting heart. I zeal inspire as thou hast died for me. Oh, may my love for thee pure, warm, and changeless be a living fire. While life's dark maze I dread and griefs around me spread. Be thou my guide, bid darkness turn to day, wipe sorrow's tears away, nor let me ever stray from thee aside. When ends life's transient dream, when death's cold silence stream shall o'er me roll, bless Savior then in love, fear and distrust remove, oh, bear me safe above my ransom soul. Amen. Brother Andy, will you open the service in prayer tonight? Amen. 351, you may be seated. 351, tell it to Jesus. Are you weary, over oh, heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Are you grieving, over oh, joys departed? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. To the tears flow down your cheeks unbidden. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Have you sins that to men's eyes are hidden? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Do you fear the gathering clouds of sorrow? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Are you anxious what shall be tomorrow? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You know other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Are you troubled at the thought of dying? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. For Christ coming kingdom are you sighing. Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. 
He's a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. And 355. What a friend we have in Jesus. 355. <laughs> What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, our peace, patient with their trouble anywhere. We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. And Find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share. Jesus knows your every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, troubled with the load of care? Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Who thy friends despise, forsake thee. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. Amen. Thank you, ladies and Mike. Well, as far as announcements go, this Sunday is Daylight Savings Time. Ends, I guess you'd say. Um, so we'll be falling back, but uh, don't usually have to worry about that too much anymore because the phones and stuff take care of that uh, on their own. Now, but um, this Sunday will be the fellowship a luncheon, and the ladies are trying to uh, have a little bit of a schedule, kind of have a Thanksgiving dinner type of idea. There's some suggestions on here. If you want to bring something other than that, feel free to. But if one of these things lines up with something you want to bring, sign your name beside it, and that'll give us an idea of who, who can bring what. So... We'll pass this around. Once again, no pressure. Uh, if that's not what you want to bring, uh, yes, I need that information. I'm sure that the Facebook chat or the Apple Facebook or something will come in. <laughs> what, a, what a blessing, Mike. Wow. What a sacrifice. That's good. couple um, missionaries uh, this or, or one presentation this month and then uh, missionary Mike Drusk will be here with us um, I just love his uh, the, the work that he's doing and I'm looking forward to fellowshipping a little bit with him on the 27th um, Compassion Pregnancy Center we're doing up those bags for them still a little low on um a little low on, on diapers, newborn diapers, but um, hopefully we'll have some of them for Sunday. We're putting some bags together. I also noticed that we were out of Bibles, so I did an order of them. Actually, um, when uh, Dale Morey was here, he said he gets a really good deal on good Bibles. So I called him up and uh, asked him to send me a picture of the Bibles he's getting, and, and they were nice, and so... 
Um, he's working on getting us a really good deal on these Bibles to put in these packages. Also, uh, Miller's Mary Manor called me a couple days ago, and um, they're changing their name or they're being bought out or something to Infinity Waters, which is why that sign says that now. But um, they're wondering if our church would be willing to sponsor um, or provide gifts, Christmas gifts, for 10 of their residents this uh, Christmas. And so I told them we would. And so their director sent over some suggestions um, for 10 of their residents of what they might want. So um, if the Lord's laid on, that on your heart, something like that, and you want to be involved, uh, we'll get you uh, one of those residents and, and uh, you can buy a gift for them. And we'll have a Bible for them too, if you'd like to put that in as well. We, uh, so that'll be good. Thank you to all those who helped with the Halloween bags, putting them together and buying candy and, and, uh, and, and assembling and passing them out. That was, uh, that was a blessing, and, and Lord willing, that will um, bring forth fruit with uh, them reading the tracts and the John and Romans and such like. Uh, I do have a, a address for Kimberly in Kimberly Grasso in... Um, in Three Rivers Health Center, Wellness Center. Um, if you want, I can say it, or I'll, you can just come see me afterwards, and, and I'll give it to you afterwards. Do remember to um, pray for Kimberly. A um, couple of us were up this week to see her, and and uh, she is in pretty good spirits, isn't she, Cindy? Um, but she's got a little ways to go, so... Hopefully she has patience to stay there as long as she needs to in order to heal. So continue to pray for, for um, Kimberly as well as Harvey Rookstool and Aaron, um, Shirley's, Shirley Rogers' great-grandson, and uh, Nathan Hill, talking to him um, this, uh, this Monday. And, and so um, he's going to be settling in here in next week, he hopes. But... Uh, but uh, remember to pray for him and uh, that the Lord will just be with him in uh, wherever he, he is. So those are the announcements coming up and uh, the prayer, a couple prayer requests there. I know we'll have more, but um, anybody else have a praise you want to add? Nathan? Amen. Amen. Miss Jeannie. Oh, he was sleeping that time. <laughs> well, praise the Lord for his protection. Amen. Doc, did you have? No. All right, take your Bibles tonight, and we'll turn to uh, 1 Samuel, <clears throat> the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 1. First Samuel, chapter 1. Now there was a certain man of Ramathaim Zophim of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, and Ephrathite. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, the name of the other, 
Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah. But the Lord had shut up her womb. And her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, therefore she wept and did not eat. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am, I, am not I better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. And she vowed a vow, and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought, she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for um, your, your word, thy scripture that is given to us to encourage and to, uh, that we can sympathize and, and we can see ourselves in. Lord, I pray that you would help us to understand who you are and how you work and, and uh, that we might better serve thee, that we might not get discouraged in hard times, but we might uh, really under, understand thy working. Pray that you be glorified in this time, in Jesus' name, amen. We actually have uh, two prayers here recorded by, uh, or two prayers of Hannah recorded here, the second one being in chapter 2. The Lord obviously looked uh, down and he saw this prayer of Hannah, and he, he, it was a, a, a sweet incense in uh, his nostrils or his ears, and um, and he recorded it here. One in that we just read is a prayer of great sorrow, and one is of thanksgiving and praise. One was uh, silent, and it was personal, um, a, a cry, a plea, and one was open. It seems as though it was public. It was it was praise and thanksgiving in, ver in chapter number two. Both were in the house of God. Both were in Shiloh. <coughs> we're not really told uh, many of the details of how this, uh, how uh, things evolved in this home, who who was married first, and why there was a second marriage. But we find that Hannah 
was really caught up in a hard situation, a, a hard home life. Her husband had married two wives, and they were probably stuck in the same house. The other wife had many ch children, but Hannah had no children. And uh, verse number six says, and her adversary provoked her sore to, for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. Immediately we would say maybe, why, why would the Lord shut up her, her womb? Why is it that, I mean, he's God. He certainly would know that she would be provoked and she would be mistreated by uh, Penina, but in a situation where we see that most would be driven away from God, what do we see here with Hannah? It run, she runs to God. It draws her, her, her closer to God. You know, sad enough in our lives, most often we don't seek the Lord when everything is hunky-dory. Oftentimes we don't remember to to seek the Lord when, when things are going well and, and when we are successful and able to get the things that we want. I saw a bumper sticker today uh, when I was up in Michigan. It says, all I want is everything. <laughs> uh, when we get everything, when things are going our way, oftentimes we are really too busy to think about God. And... Um, and so, so God has to declutter a few things for us so that we begin to think about him. We begin to ponder him. I remember reading about a pastor who was approached by a young man who was excited about what the Lord was doing in his life and he desired to, to serve him. And, and in the matter of the, the, the conversation in the, that they were together, he had told the pastor that he had promised the Lord that he that um, everything that God blessed him with, he would tithe on. And so at this time, he was making $40 a week, and so he was given $4 uh, dollars a week. And uh, time went on, and this uh, young man got a job, three, four years go on, and he had, he had moved out of town, and, and he was doing very well. But he did continue to tithe. He did continue to give to the Lord, but as, as his income increased, his bills also became bigger, and he was finding it harder and harder to, to, to tithe. And so finally one day he called his former pastor and he said, you remember what I told the Lord about, uh, about uh, tithing? If he blessed me, I would tithe him. I've been doing that. But he says, uh, uh, it, my, my expenses are big and, and, and my income is, is, is bigger and and, and I'm just, I'm just finding it hard to tithe. I, I'm giving $500 a week now, and I'm just finding it hard to tithe. Do you think that you could pray and ask God to release me from that promise? You know, we kind of smile, but probably we've all been there. My bills are too high. I... I just can't afford to give. Not really realizing that the reason you had the prosperity to get yourself in that debt was because God blessed you. The pastor paused for a few minutes and he said, certainly, let's pray together. And so he prayed there with him on the phone and he said, um, Lord, you remember the promise this young man gave you uh, back years ago about that he would uh, give tithes on, on uh, all that you blessed him with. And back then he was making $40 an hour and cheerfully giving $4 an hour. And Lord, I just want you to look down because now he's making too much money to tithe. And so we'd, uh, we'd ask that you'd reduce his income to where he'd be pleased to tithe. Well, the young man, he actually thanked the pastor because it put a perspective back into his life. But he needed to be thankful. He needed to not back away from God, but to draw closer to God. 
because of the many blessings that God had done. But so many times we don't uh, appreciate God or seek his face until some heartache or some struggle. We don't, the, the blessings of God seem to, to, to make us drift, drift away and, and backslide rather than, um, and, and so when burdens come, we ought to see that it's God trying to pull us in, trying to draw us near. And that is what, um, that, that is what it did for Hannah. Hannah had a desire, a supreme desire. She had a, a, a burden that no one could help her with. Her husband tried to help her with with it and 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 that wasn't any help and and uh eli the the priest couldn't help her and uh certainly hophni and phineas were no help um but uh she she just felt trapped and so she ran to god and god loved her prayer so much he recorded it for us to learn from and to 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 read and so number one i want to look at her care uh her care number one Uh, Verse number 10, and she was in in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. The Bible doesn't say that her attitude was one of bitterness. It says that she was in bitterness of soul. It means that circumstances beyond her control had dumped her into this cesspool of uh, of anger and and, and spite and um, she was in bitterness of soul and ached so so bad that she couldn't stop crying and every time someone tried to comfort her it just seemed to get worse and and even her husband tried to comfort her and she wanted nothing to nothing but to be left alone and so as soon as the meal was over which she didn't eat um, though he had asked her about that and Tried to encourage her too, but as soon as the meal was over, in verse number 9, she excused herself, and the Bible says that she poured out her soul. You've probably used that term. Well, this is where it came from. Hannah poured out her soul unto the Lord, unto God. And um, have you ever poured out your soul to God? poured out your soul to God, knowing that he's the only one that can solve it, knowing that he's the only one that really can hear and understand. And, uh, but sad to say, oftentimes pouring out our soul comes with great heartache and great, great burden and sorrow. Hannah didn't live in a time of great faith. In fact, she lived in one of the lowest times in Israel, uh, when the priests were just wretched, evil, immoral people, uh, the sons of Levi, God slew them because of their wickedness, and and yet they were the leaders, the religious leaders of uh, of uh, Israel. They were in the priesthood, and uh, it seems as though Elkanah, her husband, loved the Lord. He he generously gave the sacrifices and the portions year by year, even though he knew what type of people Eli and, uh, I mean, uh, Hophni and Phinehas were, were like. Uh, verse number three tells us that. He, he brought these sacrifices unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh, even though he knew that those two uh, uh, wicked wretches were there. He was given it unto the Lord and not to them. But uh, there certainly was no faith here within the priesthood uh, in, in these days. And yet she didn't turn to the world like everybody else was. Uh, obviously, Eli was familiar with the fact that people were turning to the world's way of taking care of their sorrows. He, he, he was expecting her to be drunk. Obviously, it wasn't the first time he had seen Somebody come in that was drunk, and that's just where where things had deteriorated to. Um, but it surprised Eli when he saw somebody sincerely praying. How sad is that? She was in the house of God, and and he was expecting her to be drunk instead of sincerely praying. 
And, uh, and so here, this is the, the religious state, the, the spiritual state here uh, of uh, the land of Israel. You know, maybe if we poured out our hearts in a time of blessing, we wouldn't have such bitterness of soul in time to come. You know, most people pray fervently for their children once they are gone or, or once they, they so, some other make decisions they don't agree with or somebody, something else. But in the busyness of child rearing, they don't even think to pray for them um, while they are growing up. How often we don't think to pray for one another, um, even though we see things that, that might disturb us or, or that we question and we, we, we don't come alongside and encourage until they're already gone. And uh, we ought to, as brothers and sisters, come alongside and, and uh, when, in times of blessing, pray for each other. In times of blessing, pray for our family. In times of blessing, pray so that um, we're not trying to, what do they say, uh, a, uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Amen. And I think that's, uh, that's true in prayer as well. We need to pray early, pray often, um, kind of like voting. Vote early and often. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, pray early and often. You know, one of the firemen who owns a business here in LaGrange, he, he um, asked me a couple days ago, have you seen a increase in uh, calls to the church for help yet? And uh, the answer is yes, absolutely. I get calls all the time. And, uh, but it was interesting that he asked that um, because the, the temperatures are getting colder. You know, people don't think to phone when the temperatures are pleasant and everything is good but they want they, they call and well can I put it this way ask for God's money ask for God's help when when the temperatures get get uh, colder I had a guy phone a couple days ago and and I'm, I'm just trying to think of how I can reach these guys you know they're calling the church certainly there's there's got to be some, some way that, that we can reach them. And so I asked this guy that called in, I said, um, well, you're, you're uh, calling and asking for God's help. What can you do for him? Have you ever considered that? No. Um, don't you guys get grants from the government for this? No. <laughs> um. It's interesting the thoughts that go around, well, not only about uh, religion and heaven and hell, but the church itself. But, um, but uh, we don't think to call out to God until we're in trouble. That's the point I'm getting, getting to. And I'm not sure what Hannah's situation was. Maybe she had been praying all along, uh, but she finally got to the place where it was so bad that she, she poured out her soul and uh, she told Eli, out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. And we sang here tonight, are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Are you grieving over joys departed? Tell it to Jesus alone. The core of her pl uh, complaint was there's trouble in the home. And, uh, and she was trying. She was trying to do right, but everywhere she turned, there was Penina. There was her adversary to jab her with another insult, to jab her with with uh, with, with, with some uh, slur or some rude joke or whatever it is, and or or maybe even to ask for help with the kids. Here I got all these kids, and you don't have any. You can help me. Um, but uh, there it was, in her home, in her face all the time. And you know, every family has problems. Every family has their hurts. But what made it so extremely hard for Hannah was that she was trying to do the right thing. Here she was trying to do the right thing, and she was trapped. She couldn't get out. And where could she go? 
Penina wouldn't listen to reason. Penina wouldn't w- w- thought her rude comments were funny. And so Hannah escaped to God. You know, Wednesday nights we make prayer requests for people who are um, have health concerns and, and have, have uh, all sorts of other troubles. But rarely, rarely does it, it come down to reveal what hurt is really deep down in our hearts. I mean, I have, I have hurts and our family has hurts that, that probably nobody will know except for our family. Everyone here could say the same thing. Uh, I've got hurts that I, they don't need to be aired. But we, we need to lift each other up and just maybe pray for those that have health concerns. Absolutely. But pray for those that you think are absolutely healthy <laughs> because they got problems, too. They got hurts, too. And um, Elkanah, he, he probably thought everything was fine because am, am I not uh, as good as 10 sons? There wasn't much comfort to her. And so she, she could only go to, to God alone. We have sorrows. We have griefs. And so we need to pray for one another. Not only her uh, care, but her commitment. Uh, verse number 11. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give Unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all his days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. (coughs) What a commitment. What a faith, and what a follow-through in a faithless time. In, In a time when Israel didn't even really believe that God was even there because of the wickedness that was going on and and they didn't see, um, didn't see his his hand upon the the disobedient. You know, there's 500 reasons why Hannah shouldn't have had to follow through with her commitment. She could have uh, looked at Eli, see how old and fat he was. She could have looked at his sons and saw how wretched and wicked they were. She could have come up with all kinds of reasons and been absolutely justified. But in a faithless time, she has faith. Ecclesiastes says 5, Ecclesiastes 5, When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. God's not saying don't vow. He's saying don't vow and not pay. The closer you are in any relationship, the dearer your promises are to one another. There is no union on earth as close as a marriage and no dearer a vow between two people than a marriage vow. Why? Because that relationship is dear. And if you want your relationship with God to be dear as well, claim his promises and give him some. Make some vows to him. In the short time that I've been pastor here at LaGrange Baptist Church, I've heard a few vows. How many times have you heard, I'll be sure to come out to church. You'll be sure to see me back. Yeah. Never see him again. The Lord wants us to vow unto him, but he, he wants us not to do it lightly. You know, we very easily make promises We very easily make vows when we feel under pressure and when we want something from God or when a burden is pressing down upon us or some suffering of illness. But when that pressure is gone, how quickly we forget. Not Hannah. I can't think of a harder thing for a mother to do 
than what Hannah did here. No wonder God recorded her, 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 her prayer and her actions. I don't think there's a harder thing on earth to do, but she did not fail to keep her vow. John Elliott said, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain that which he cannot lose. Probably the hardest thing for parents to do is give their children to God and just allow God to do the work in their lives. You know, so often we don't trust God to do as good a job as we're doing. If Hannah had held on to that little boy, who's to say what he had grown up to be? Maybe he would have come yearly to the sacrifices and he would have thought that, Eli, uh, that Hophni and Phinehas were cool and gone that way. But growing up in that environment, he was so disgusted that he just drew close to God and the Lord was with him. Number three, she continued in prayer. Verse number 12, and it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. I wonder how many answers to prayer I've missed out because missed out on because I've more or less done a once and done prayer. When God wanted me to show how much I really wanted that. But I, I was like, well, go Lord, you, you, you say I needed to tell you this, so here it is. And well, I got that out of the way. Now it's up to God to answer that. When God wants us to to, to keep on coming and keep on coming and show how, how fervent we are. Show how much we really, we really want that. And uh, Hannah continued praying before the, the Lord, obviously longer than most people pray, because Eli took notice. Our new hymnals have a song in them. Um, and by the way, they are ordered, so they're on the way. But um, just keep on praying. Anybody know that one? Just keep on praying till light breaks through. Uh, pray when the storm clouds gather overhead, hiding the light from view, filling your soul with darkness and dread. Pray till the light breaks through. I can tell you, folks, the answer to prayer for this property and this building and all that we're enjoying right now didn't come with a once and done prayer. It didn't. It came with a congregation gathering together on a Sunday afternoon week after week after week, and in prayer, uh, in private prayer, and, and, and many other things uh, at times. We need to continue in prayer. Her contentment, finally. Finally, her contentment in verse number 18. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. Folks, Eli the high priest wasn't a spiritual man, but he was the one in that place of authority. And even though Israel was at their lowest point um, spiritually, God still spoke to Hannah individually, and he will. To anybody who will follow him and draw close to him while everybody else is, is running away, he will speak to you individually, and he will... Answer your prayers individually. And uh, God still spoke to Hannah and brought her peace. Eli, God's anointed high priest, said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. That was good enough for her. That was good enough. She claimed that promise, and she went away with a thankful heart. Obviously, her prayer wasn't answered that very day. She was praying for a child. But for her, it was answered that day. She went away happy. She went away and was no more sad. She was contented that God would answer her request. You know, maybe we should be a little bit more ready to thank the Lord, even if we don't see the, 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 the fruit of that answer yet. You know, Abraham was thankful to the Lord. He didn't even live to see the answer. But you know, the Lord can give you a, a, a peace about some troubled situation. The Lord can give you peace uh, uh, about 
some loved one that you're praying for, and you can thank the Lord that he'll take care of it. If we were to read on, we'd see that God did answer her prayer in verses 20 through 28 and, and uh, gave her more than she had asked for. He gave her three more sons and, and two more daughters that we read about in chapter 2 and verse 20 or something like that, uh, 2021. Um, her heart was full and she rejoiced. And, and we read another prayer of Hannah, which we're not going to have tonight. But that's a prayer of rejoicing. That's a prayer of victory. I guarantee you Penina didn't pray that prayer. She was still, uh, her, her days of gloating were over because God had heard the prayer of, of Hannah. And she was, I'm sure, uh, very disturbed about that. Um, not living in victory, but rather in defeat. I'm sure that this was not the only time that Hannah prayed. We have these two prayers uh, recorded for us, but this was a life-changing moment that brought her close, closer to fellowship with God than she ever was before. And I'm sure that continued on. I'm sure that that just got better and better um, as the Lord just continued to bless her. We need to learn from Hannah. Get alone with God. Don't post your grief on Facebook. Get along with God. Tell him your complaints and your griefs. Why do you think David, or God loved David so much? <laughs> David said it exactly the way it is. Lord, this person is persecuting me. Kill him. <laughs> he, just, he just told God exactly how he felt. And uh, God didn't necessarily mean that God was going to go do that. But David just said exactly the way it was. And Hannah told God exactly how it was. We need to tell God exactly what we want. Exactly how we're feeling. Exactly how, what we want. And then uh, leave it to him. Make commitments. Claim his promises. And then get up with a smile on our face and a confidence that I can let God take care of it. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful a prayer that you've recorded for us uh, of a lady who started out in great grief and ended in absolute victory and praise. Lord, I pray that you be glorified in our lives that we might have this experience. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we will um, come to our prayer time. We've mentioned a, a couple of